Well, hello, beautiful. Welcome to another Ask Henna Soup. Thank you for joining me. Every week, I answer your pressing questions about henna and aloe vera hair care. And if you didn't know, my name is Khadija, and I'm the CEO and founder of Henna Soup. So welcome. Today, the question is, what happens if I use henna and indigo in a one-step process. What does that what does that mean? You might be thinking like, well, there's a lot of different henna recipes out there, a lot of different henna instructions. Some of them are very very old actually. <laughs> so, first off, disregard the old information. Try to find the most updated information possible. At Henna Soup, what we do is a DIY method, and that DIY method is what's going to get you the best color results and cover grays the absolute best way. Absolutely, hands down. So when you're doing a one-step process specifically, and that means you're going to be using indigo and you're going to be using henna. So with these two herbs, you can get a variety of color tones. You can get reddish brown, you can get brown, you can get dark brown. Those are the tones you will generally get by using a one-step process. So you might be like, okay, well, Khadija, you, you guys have this confusing color chart on henna silk. You're like, uh. um, a lot of you do like photos. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a ton of photos of a wide variety of clients usually. So maybe that should be a very important project that we I can work on in the future. But it does vary so much person by person. First, it depends on your natural hair color and it depends on your grays and also depends on how much gray you have. So there's so many kind of variables. And then like, is your hair porous? Is it not so porous, you know, low porosity, high porosity is, does it ab will absorb the color? Is it very resistant? So it's, I don't like to resort to the photos due to that because I just feel they're not very accurate. Sometimes it can be a little misleading, especially since sometimes people need to do more than one application, which we definitely have a really good video on covering stubborn hair. So at the end of this video, you should definitely check out that video, especially if that applies to you, it's going to help you get your hair colored, especially when it's very stubborn and resistant to color. But let's talk about henna and indigo. So on the color chart that we have at Henna Soap, it goes by percentages and it gives you different henna and indigo, you know, recommendations. Typically, you know, the henna powders do vary with how strong they are. Like the Red Raj will be the best one for stubborn hair. And then our indigo for hair will be the best one for great coverage and just resistant hair that covers it really, really well. So for reddish brown tones, typically that'll be 70% henna to 30% indigo. And what does that mean? If you're not sure, definitely check out this article that we have on measurements made easy. Just click how to on the hennasook.com website, scroll down and it's, it's basically right there. 70% henna to 30% indigo basically means three parts henna to one part indigo. So you can follow those proportions in order to get a reddish brown tone. Now, if you want brown, it's actually pretty easy. It says 50% of each, which basically means one to one. Boom, brown, that's brown. And then if you want a dark brown tone, then you're going to be doing 70% indigo to 30% henna, which again is basically three parts indigo to one part henna. And that will be your dark brown tone. And do know, usually yes, you can get that color right away. That'll happen for your hair right away. The only exceptions are, of course, it depends on your natural hair color. Someone who already has like in the brown range, it's gonna be probably very easy to get that tone quicker because they already have, they're already in the brown range. But if your hair is like blonde, you may have to do a lot of applications. And the same is for someone who has a lot of gray hair. You may have to do more than one application. So just note that when you're doing it the first time, you know, it may be like, oh, that's a little bright or something's a little off. Maybe give it a, you know, your hair a rest at least five to seven days. And then make sure you have that aloe vera powder in your recipes because that's going to add the moisture that you need because you do not want to dry out your hair when you're using henna hair color. So definitely do that and recolor over it because henna like layers, it kind of like binds like better over time. And then if you want to at some point, you know, just do a root touch up. It's as easy as that. The same recipe, of course, you'll need less for roots. You won't be using as much as you need for all your hair. So I hope that answers your questions. If you have any other questions about the one step process, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to go deeper and dive into that with you and stay tuned because we have videos every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday, and you don't wanna miss it. So subscribe, 
hit the bell. I'm gonna see you next time. All right, have a good one. Bye.